All right, I am Wes. I'm Jaina. I'm Paige. And we have understanding of the community and support services for the elderly. So just some pre-questions to think about when we go through this. Has anyone ever heard of an adult daycare center? If so, how? What is your ideal cost of an adult daycare center? Can you think of any stereotypes toward adult daycare centers? Um, do you think that it's hard for families to send their loved ones to an adult daycare and why? And should hospitals have adult daycare centers on site? Why or why not? So to start out, um, just understanding the community. Many stereotypes are towards the elderly. I'm sure in our clinical sites, you can think of some that maybe you've developed or heard about. They can prevent older people from participating in social and spiritual and political events. Um, elderly also known to kind of have a negative attitude and maybe portray that in some form or fashion. Elderly can, um, they can portray pessimistic behaviors due to aging. And it's important to understand that the health and care of the elderly is centered around prevention and health promotion, patients and education, understanding their way of life, and taking into perspective their ideals and opinions. So just some history. In the 1940s, adult daycare services began in psychiatric hospitals, primarily to assist patients following the release from mental institutions. One of the first ones was Yale Psychiatric Clinic, and these kind of places were more for just, um, once they come out of the mental institution, you know, maybe they're a little not there all themselves, and they just kind of stick them there. Not a whole lot of care centered around them, just kind of a, more of a babysitting type of stuff. In the 1960s, daycare services shifted from psychiatric focus to health maintenance. Adult daycare centers were began to operate in all states across the country, and Medicare and Medicaid were enacted, and, they, and the care of elderly was focused on acute care. In the 80s, the National Institute of Adult Daycare Center, the NIAD, was formally organized. And in the 1990s, they set national standards for adult daycare center facilities. Um, they required staff to be certified in the training and care of the elderly. Okay, so today there's currently 4,600 adult daycare centers in the United States. So what is an adult daycare? Adult daycare is a program in which activities are provided to promote social support and health services to an older adult during the day. So it consists of different musical entertainment groups, singing groups, group games, and discussion groups. It also provides the elderly person the opportunity to engage in social support activities as well as with collaborating with other people and that participants can form lasting relationships with their caregivers and other group members as well. So there's three different types of adult daycares that are seen in the United States today. There's social adult daycare, adult day health care, and specialized adult, adult daycare. So social adult daycare provides non-medical supervision. It's more for recreation, social activities, and they do provide nutritious meals to all the participants. Also, adult day health care is more for care services. There's trained nurses on staff. Speech therapy might be offered. Your, the participants are being more, um, they're helped with their daily living activities and medication administration. And they're being able to, they're watched more closely than with the social adult day care. The last one that's offered in the United States is the specialized adult day care. So this is more for patients with Alzheimer's, dementia, um, and also it's to, prevent, to protect and prevent from wandering, injury, and behavioral challenges. So this type of daycare is when the participants are watched really closely more than the um, adult day health care. Also, so sometimes one center will provide all three types of care. You don't always get the individualized centers, but that varies by state, and then they each have a different name as well. So there's many different activities provided at these centers depending on what type of center it is. So there's crafts, cooking, exercise, field trips, pet therapy, things like that. They also, these centers allow the participants to develop and increase their self-awareness by encouraging independence. And then the activities are increasing a person's quality of life as well as reducing the risk of mental and physical health problems as the elderly person ages. Now for the disadvantages and advantages. So for the disadvantages, loved ones will not participate in the elderly facility because it's based on that individual. And then a lot of the caregivers don't want another person to be 
their loved one's primary care. A lot of them feel guilty that they originally thought they could take care of them and now they can't. Maybe just due to like their um, busier schedule and stuff. Now for the advantages, this gives the elderly a sense of, a sense of individuality and like it boosts their self-esteem and it really focuses on that individual and like taking their meds, eating, exercising, you know, daily activity. It just really gets them like a solid routine to fall into and just boost that independence. And then there's also like exercise programs provided, which um, would keep them healthy later down the road. And it also provides a social interaction among other older adults as well. And it just keeps them like more social and like just interactive. And then this also um, provides greater structure to daily activities, like I said previous. And then it also provides counseling and educational services, just depending on what they need in their situation. And then for the eligibility. So mainly adult daycares they're um, provided under Medicare waivers. And what the Medicare waivers do is that each applicant gets a waiver and then it looks into the income and the financial status of that individual, as well as their functional ability, just depending on their situation. Applicants do not necessarily need to require nursing home level care to attend, it's just, like I said, again, it just depends on their situation. And um, there's a maximum time of eight hours per week and then five days per week for the applicant to attend based on Medicare. And for the cost, so it's, the average cost is like $70 per day. Individuals um, facilities can vary depending on what part of the country um, it's centered in, as well as the services it offers. The more specialized service, the more expensive it's going to get. And then the centers may be less expensive if they're government funded or if the daycare offers scholarships. So if you have an individual that needs care but can't necessarily provide the cost, they could apply for scholarships to get it um, in that care facility. And then the more specialized the service is, it's going to be more expensive. And then the adult daycare is often less expensive than hiring a home health nurse or moving a loved one to a nursing facility. So before you go into like those facilities, just look into adult daycare and just compare the costs. And then, so since we live in the greater Cincinnati area, we found that there's three close sites. So there's Best Life Adult Daycare in Covington, Kentucky, Active Day of Fort Thomas, Kentucky, and then Active Day of Cincinnati, Ohio. And then just to wrap things up with our post questions, are there any adult daycare centers in your hometown? Do you know anyone that goes to an adult daycare center? Do you approve of an adult daycare center? Why or why not? Do you think adult daycare is the best option, uh, best option for elderly? And given any circumstances, would you go to an adult daycare center if you needed to?